In this video, I wanna talk about a scam that so many people fall for every single fall. I've done this video multiple times, but it's so important and it can save you thousands of dollars. So with that, let's get right into it. This video is brought to you by FilterBuy, America's number one choice for quality, affordable air filters. All right, so this is a gas furnace that we just removed from a customer's home to do a replacement on. And as you can see right here on the top, this is what's called the heat exchanger. Now the purpose of the heat exchanger is that when your gas furnace turns on, it will send flames through the burners here, and these are directly attached to these tubes. So when it turns on, the flame runs straight through in these pipes, and it goes through these pipes, and then it comes out the exhaust, and then it's vented out the outside of your home. Now here's where the scam comes in that so many contractors pull on customers. And with that, I wanna say this does not mean that every HVAC contractor is trying to steal money, but a lot of them are greedy and they wanna get $3,000 of profit in their pocket if they can just convince you that this thing is cracked. Now, the hard part is that none of this is exposed in normal conditions. You know, your duct work is here. All of this is closed off, so you can't just look in here and see what it looks like. But I'm gonna show you some ways that you can check, even without the duct work removed here, on how to check to see if it has a crack. Now, what will happen over so many years of on and off, hot and cold, hot and cold, is these heat exchangers can develop a legitimate crack. And the danger there is that this carbon monoxide that this produces, the unburnt fumes, how it's supposed to work, again, is it comes through here and it gets vented to the exterior of your home. Now, if you have a crack that develops in here, that means that air that's coming through here and going into your home can potentially have carbon monoxide and that can be very dangerous. They say it's the silent gas, the silent killer, so you don't detect it, you don't smell it, um, it's very dangerous. So I don't wanna underestimate the danger of this if it does actually have a crack, but I wanna show you how you can check to verify that it does or to see that it doesn't. So as you can see, this one looks really good. Um, there's no rust or anything. Um, there's a little bit of rust here on the back side, but nothing major. Um, you can see a little bit of discoloration, but overall this heat exchanger looks really good. And as you can see, this is a 96% furnace. So it has an additional heat exchanger down here that looks kind of like an evaporator coil. So this will condense and it will actually draw water out of this unit. So let's get into the ways that you can check your heat exchanger. One of the first things that I look at when I'm checking a heat exchanger is simply looking at the flames. The flames on a gas furnace should be really blue. There should be very little orange in the flames, if any. And if you have a lot of orange, that's a telltale sign that you do have a crack in the heat exchanger. Now with that, when you run this for the first time in the season, you'll have a lot of dust particles that are being burnt off. So run it for at least 10, 20 minutes and then check your flames. If they're blue, the odds of having a cracked heat exchanger are pretty slim. But if you see a lot of orange, that's a good sign that it does have a crack. But I wanna show you another test that you can do to confirm that you have a crack in the heat exchanger. So you're gonna turn the furnace on, you're gonna watch those flames, but specifically, as soon as the blower comes on, you're going to watch those flames. And if when the blower comes on, a lot of orange appears, that means that that air that's going past the heat exchanger, some of that has entered into the heat exchanger and caused that flame to turn orange. So that's a really good indicator that you also have a crack in the heat exchanger. The second test I'm gonna show you how to do involves just a simple lighter, just like this one. And all we're gonna do is turn the fan on, nothing else. So you can either go to your thermostat and just set it to the fan on mode, or you can take the panel off of the front and just jump the R and the G terminals, and that will just simply turn the fan on and nothing else. Okay, so before we turn the fan on, I wanna just explain what we're doing here. So this is called the lighter test or the match test. And basically what we're doing is we're simply lighting a flame and we're feeding it down into the heat exchanger as far as we can get it. And as you can see, that flame is not moving whatsoever. Now, if you have a crack in the heat exchanger, air is going to be escaping and going into this tube that's behind this um, burner 
and that's going to cause this flame to flicker and move around a ton and that's a good indicator that you have a crack in a heat exchanger. So there's a couple of ways you can do this test. If you have small burners, it can be hard to get something like this in there. So we can actually just take these burners out. It's pretty easy to do. So all we're gonna do is take these quarter inch screws out that hold this manifold in place. And we'll show you how easy it is to just slide this off of the burners here. So there we go, we're just gonna set this down like this. And now what we did to get this out here is we just angled it over like this and you can simply take these out and set them aside. You can also take this opportunity to clean this up if you find that there's nothing wrong with the heat exchanger. And this is a good opportunity to just do a preventative maintenance on these burners. So now that we have those out of the way, as you can see, we have a clear opening here. Um, this really doesn't look great. If you see a lot of rusting there, um, that's a pretty good indicator that this furnace, you know, might need to be replaced. This particular furnace is from 2004. So, you know, it's, it's had its use for sure. So if we light this up, we go as far down into that heat exchanger as possible. And obviously right now, nothing's gonna be moving because there's no fan. So we're gonna do this same test with the fan on. And if this flame is flickering like crazy, that's a good indicator that air is getting into the heat exchanger. So let's fire the fan up and see what we got. Okay, so as you can see, our fan is on. We're gonna light up our lighter here. As you can see, that flame is not moving whatsoever. Now, if we move it over to this one, same thing, not moving at all. And finally, the third one here, and as you can see, no movement whatsoever. So that's one way to confirm that this heat exchanger does not have a crack. Now, if you don't feel like taking the burner assembly apart and you just don't wanna get into that, but you still wanna do this test, you can easily do this with long matchsticks. As you can see, they're super narrow, and I'll show you how much easier they are to slide into a smaller heat exchanger tube like this one. Okay, so as we can see, the assembly is all together here. We're just gonna light one of these matches. And then, as you can see, we'll feed this in. We can go in a solid six, eight inches, and you can see the flame is still just going straight up. So you can use this to verify if your flame is uh, shaking, if it's dancing, or if it's going straight. And you can use one of these for quite a long time. You can go through on each burner and do that same test. And it's as easy as that. Another easy way to look for and confirm whether or not you have a crack is by means of a scope like this one. Now this is a Milwaukee scope. It doesn't have to be something like this one. You can find these on Amazon. In fact, I'll leave a link in the video description of one that I do love. And you can view it on your phone and see it in a nice clear image and make an informed decision based off of that. But let's check it out with this one and see what we can find on this furnace. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is just make sure that when we're pointing this up and down that our image is going up and down and following where we're going. Because if this is rotated like 90 degrees and you go up and this thing goes left, it can throw you off significantly. Um, really nice clear image with uh, this Milwaukee. I really like this one. Um, so right off right here, even without a scope, you can see all of the rust that is here on this unit. Now, that's a good indicator that this furnace was either not set up properly or it was having some issues. And so this gives you a clear indication that this furnace probably needs to be replaced. Not necessarily that it's leaking carbon monoxide right now, but that it very well could at any moment. So now if we lift this up and down, notice how it's reversed. This is actually upside down. So we're gonna rotate it 180 degrees and we're gonna try it again. See now when we're going down, it goes down, we go up. Otherwise this can be really confusing to work with. Now something else is you wanna make this as straight as possible so that when you're going into this heat exchanger, 
um, you're going to get a nice clear image. Okay, so as we go into this heat exchanger, you can see that long rusted crack. This indicates that there's been a lot of moisture in this heat exchanger and that seam right there, it's not necessarily a crack, but it could definitely turn into one at any moment. So this gives you a good indicator as to why this furnace is replaced, why we chose to replace it. And as we go into the second heat exchanger here or the second uh, burner tube, you can see that same rust line all the way through. That's a really good indicator that you're probably gonna have some problems with this furnace very soon. Now, as we talked about before, um, nothing out here is giving any indication that there is any problems because this looks pretty solid. So take that into consideration too. I'm not saying that you absolutely have to replace this immediately, but a lot of times when you can't get in here and see this, you're just basing it off of what you see on the inside. And sometimes that can be a little bit deceiving. Now, right here, again, all of that was super rusted on the inside, but everything here is looking pretty good. But it doesn't take much at all for something to start coming through this firewall and to then have carbon monoxide um, going into your uh, the air of your home. But hopefully this just gives you an idea of kind of what to look for. Now, this is just on this segment. We'll now open the... Um, the blower area, pull the blower out, and we'll get inside here and see what it looks like in there. Okay, so I just wanted to show you what it looks like up inside here on a 96% furnace. You're just gonna see the condensing coils here. You might still be able to see if there's rust or other telltale signs that this is going bad, but I wanna show you on an 80% furnace what this looks like. So all these furnaces are going to be oriented just about the same. This is an upflow furnace, and obviously this is a demo furnace. You'll notice we don't have an exhaust on it right now. Um, and the blower assembly is in the bottom half on an upflow furnace. It's gonna be reversed if you have a downflow furnace where the air blows down. So your blower motor would be up here and the gas portion would be down here. So let's remove this cover and show you how to remove that blower wheel. Okay, so we're simply gonna remove these two screws here. By the way, this tool is amazing. I absolutely love these Malco reversible bits. If you haven't seen them yet, um, you can just reverse these and pretty much any screw on this furnace is gonna be one of these two sizes. If you're curious where to find this, you can find it in our Amazon store. Simply go to the video description right here below, click on my favorite HVAC tools, and you'll see all of these tools right there. Okay, so now that we've got this opened up, we can see our control board is right here in the way. We have two screws holding that in, so we're just gonna pop that off. And then most of the time, we can just kind of set these off to the side as we're pulling the blower out. And what you'll notice is right up here, there's going to be some screws that are holding this in place. You can see one right up here and then one on the other side, and this is always gonna be on a track. So as soon as we remove those two, we should be able to slide this and kind of move this along with it and set it aside so we can get in here and see what the bottom of the heat exchanger looks like. Okay, so now that we've got those two screws loosened, we're simply gonna pull on this lower wheel. And it's gonna slide out. We can just slide this out with it and we'll just set it off to the side. So now we have nothing disconnected on the electronics there and we have this open space where we can look up and see our heat exchanger. Okay, so as you can see, we're just gonna go up into the heat exchanger here we can see the bottom of it there. And we can just go along. That's where the entrance of the heat exchanger is. It has some sort of orange um, isolator, but we could go into the next bay here. And we can look at all of these joints right here to verify. Obviously this is a brand new heat exchanger, but we can go through the bottom side and we can check all of this. We can also go all the way up here and check out our coil. 
which is really fascinating. We can see if we have a dirty coil. So you can use this as an opportunity to do a lot more than just check your heat exchanger. But as you can see, it's that easy to get in there and check it out. Now, one last thing I wanna talk about is obviously safety when it comes to carbon monoxide. If you do have a crack in the heat exchanger, the reality is, is that some of the time that crack is so small and so minute that it's not even causing any, um, any carbon monoxide to get into the home. And that just goes to show the importance of having a carbon monoxide detector. Now this specific one actually shows you if it's less than the amount that a normal carbon monoxide detector goes off at, which I think is 400 parts per million, which is a lot. This will actually show, um, as you can see, it shows zero right now, but it will show down to like, I think 50 or 60 parts per million, well before it becomes a, a serious threat. So that's one reason why I prefer this one. And again, I'll leave this in the video description so you can check it out there. Another way that you can confirm or deny whether you have a crack in the heat exchanger is this right here. This is a handheld carbon monoxide detector. Most HVAC technicians are gonna have them. And as a homeowner or a DIYer, this is an invaluable tool. You can put this on any supply vent and see what the parts per million are. You should be at zero, but there's a fine line here. Um, a contractor could say you have a crack in the heat exchanger. It might not be dangerous and it might not be dangerous for years to come. So if you've been given enough evidence to feel comfortable about replacing it, by all means, go ahead and replace it. But if you just don't feel like they're telling the truth and that they're lying, you can pick up one of these, make sure you have carbon monoxide detectors and you'll be totally fine. Now, again, I do not want to minimize the hazards of carbon monoxide. It is very dangerous, but unfortunately, a lot of times people replace their gas furnace when it's not really necessary. And as tight as money can be, it's really uh, frustrating to see that people are spending thousands of dollars unnecessarily just so that an HVAC contractor can get more money in his pocket. So I don't want this to sound like all HVAC contractors are like that, but unfortunately some are, and I just want you to be aware of that. So hopefully this video has been informative and you can make an informed decision when it comes to replacing your furnace or letting it run. Now, something else that happens a lot of times is there's a certain sensor that goes bad on a furnace and a contractor will try and sell you a brand new furnace just because that little sensor is bad. If you wanna see what that number one repair is, check out this video right here. It's super easy and again, can save you a ton of money. Until next time, you guys be safe. Later.